Hello, folks. <laughs> Wonderful to be here at Masari Mainnet. Thank you for joining us. And um, we're here to talk about the one thing that, that crypto needs to scale consumers. And I'm joined by a wonderful panel here. We have VJ from Superfluid. Uh, we have Shane from XMTP. We have Rich from Google and Maz from CrowdMuse. And so, you know, generally I like to tease and, and, and wait for maybe like the, the big moment to answer the big question, but I think it's probably a good thing for us just to start off with. And so I'd love to just go down the panel here and get your quick one hit short answer. We'll get into more. What is the one thing that crypto needs for us to scale consumer applications and usage. I'll start with you, Vijay. I have a pretty simple answer to this, and that's basically narratives that that stretch outside of like our inward-looking ones, ones that appeal to people who, you know, have no innate need for crypto to succeed. Um, and and I think like you know, if if you don't feel comfortable basically going to your family and friends and telling them this one thing, then like this one narrative, this one story about why they should use crypto, then until you have that thing, then then consumer crypto can't scale. Yeah, I think we have to start building with a sense of practicality, not just philosophy. And that'll lead to better products. I think we need to start focusing on solving business or consumer problems in the things that we're building, and, and we need a better developer experience. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, turning like very um, more like verticalized models into much more horizontal models because um, then in that sense inadvertently like creates much more network effects for it to grow at a higher speed. Amazing. So I, I love this idea of, I mean, probably the persistent challenge, the thing that comes up in a lot of the conversations we have with, with friends or even others building in the space is this idea of crypto being a solution in, in seeking a problem. So Rich, I know you, you and your team have been thinking deeply about this, this idea of making things people actually want is sort of core to the exploration you're doing at Google. I'm curious if you have a, any learnings or insights that sort of uh, might lead us to the, the promised land of, of the problem that crypto actually solves. Yeah, I mean, look, my insights are gonna be as good as any others, right? We're all kind of figuring this out as we go. Um, one of the things that we learned when we first stepped into this space was that the developer experience was very tricky. In other words, it became very hard um, in the first 30 seconds of talking to an app developer to have a conversation about the problem that that app solves without talking about the underlying sort of blockchain-based or crypto-based infrastructure. Um, and so what we started to do was, you know, we heard those conversations were revolving a lot around two things. Indexed blockchain data, which was quite difficult to get, and running nodes, which is a pain in the butt for any team that's been doing that and they know that and so what we came out with was this idea of how do we how do we just abstract that away for developers how do we just get them to say look I run a node just like I run a VM in cloud I click a button I pay a monthly fixed fee um, and we launched a, a product that does that for uh, on Ethereum right now it's called blockchain node engine you can run full and archival nodes basically it it's it's at a, a flat fixed rate um, and there's horizontally scale and I think once we start to provide more of that around data and around the other sort of um, uh, tooling that developers need to launch applications, I think they'll start looking, the conversations will start to look a lot more like, hey, I just built this killer app, um, and I don't need to tell anybody whether it runs on Polygon or Ethereum or, or Aptos. So, Jane, I'm assuming that your answer to that question would be like messaging. But I'm would love for you to expand on that a little bit. What are you seeing as far as like the, the ways you see XMTP or, or the applications building on top of it, using it to really solve problems that, that consumers have and, and need solved? Totally. And messaging you know, is probably the biggest use case on the internet. And so the question is, can you do it different or better? Uh, what's interesting is still today, through WhatsApp, I can't send money to anyone outside of the country I'm in. And actually, they don't even have payments because the payment rails are so hard to do. The killer use case of crypto, USDC, is probably one of the most successful and is the ability to send money globally. So to see Coinbase Wallet launch from day one to have secure interoperable messaging that supports free USDC payments to anyone in the world, all you need is a private key of a wallet, uh, is something that Venmo, Square Cash, WhatsApp cannot do. And the fact that they've launched, I think it's one of those killer use cases just the world hasn't seen yet. Uh, but that is live today. And when you see stuff like that happen, where WhatsApp got its growth because 
SMS was really expensive in other countries. And when you see the extortion of Western Union trying to send money around the world, but now you can verify with the message, because it's tied to the account that sends the money, that the person who's talking to you is the person who owns what they say they own. That is a fundamental shift in the little things of the world, like um, the sending eight cents and 10 cents to verify that that's the person when you do a wire. Or, I mean, there's nothing worse in crypto than sending money to this random address and praying. Right, And it solves that problem where I can just talk to you and the message is signed. And so you are verified to know that this money is going to who you think it's going to. And little use cases like that that seem small, you know, Twilio, 20% of Twilio's revenue when they went public was WhatsApp SMS two-factor. Those kind of use cases to me are what will drive this whole industry. I think my most consistent consumer crypto use case is sending money to random ETH addresses on the internet. So uh, with mixed results, for sure. Um, Maz, I know you're building a platform for IP rights and fashion drops on chain. Uh, so you're sort of sitting in this like mix of creator tooling and usefulness, but also like end users buying these things. I'm, I'm curious, what, what is the drive you're seeing from some of the early supporters that are, are the consumers of the CrowdMuse platform? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think w where we sit is like with you know, crypto on one side, consumer crypto on one side, but also where like retail is going. Um, like it has been in this kind of pivotal point where like e-commerce is changing. And so like the way um, buyers are consuming is also changing. Um, and so like there is this iteration of like, you know, e-commerce also um, moving towards creator commerce. Uh, which, which supposedly, I know these all these like market stats are like you know just Google and it comes up with a number, but like it's supposed to like surpass uh, e-commerce um, and so on. So what that essentially is saying is like um, collectors or buyers then become collectors of brands that they that they love. And so the the kind of like responses have been so far is um, collectors are basically associating a form of an identity to those drops and those drops are resonating with a certain culture or personality and I think like crypto web 3 in general has um, such a um, direct uh, access to what you might see as societal subcultures and fashion um, music art, etc all these very like consumer based products is essentially um, they utilize those types of trends to sell right um, and I think traditionally as a form of context like what we're trying to do is like turn the model upside down and so like what you just mentioned like you know giving the tools to developers our tooling is like no co code solutions uh, for on-chain ownership attribution and monetization for the creator community um, and so just to kind of close it off like luxury brands um, have traditionally always been the ones that would go to societal subcultures and utilize that as consumer trends that would go on a catwalk, let's say, and then it would eventually trickle down to like the high street. Uh, but the trends are very much like serving certain brands that have that um, IP right, essentially. So we're essentially, yeah, turning it on its head. Um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. Can I piggyback off of that really quick? Like, so I think going back to like, what are the problems we're solving? one of the things that I think we would all agree with that crypto is fantastic at and that some of the best applications in the space have been fantastic at is solving the problem of social coordination. In other words, there are like-minded people like me who participate in something. How do I connect with them? How do I transact with them? Um, and, and that's, I, so when you talk about that, when we think about like what's that killer use case, oftentimes we think about how do we help support people who are trying to solve that critical problem of social coordination, whether through messaging or something else, um, and I, it just, I wanted exactly. to ground it in that yeah. for a second, though, because it's like it's a good distillation of like when we say like, well, what are the business problems? What are the you know, what are the problems that consumers have? Right. That's one that's very clear to everybody who I've talked to in the space. Absolutely. I just want to share a use case that launched yesterday. So Snapshot launched with XMTP to be able to now message anyone on any application. And inside a Coinbase wallet now, you can message everyone from a Snapshot a new proposal. And inside a Coinbase wallet, when you get it, you can vote without leaving the wallet. And starting to see just the entire full loop, right? The fact that you would send a proposal and you couldn't communicate with them, like, is crazy. And now it actually, it's not just communicate, get an email, click on an email, go to a website, go to a find a wallet, log in with a wallet, none of that. You get the message in the place where you can actually vote. 
And that that is just an amazing. I, like I saw the experience, and Fabian, the the founder, was like, "It's live." And I was I went and used it. I got my first proposal yesterday, and I was like, "It's magic." And there's is that, is that your flywheel flying? Uh, <laughs> one, two, three. High signal providers sending applications wallets. All right, I'm gonna have to cut. I gotta, we got to cut them off here, otherwise we're just gonna go deep down into the go-to market for XMTP, which is fun and interesting. Um, so. Uh, Matt from Paradigm shared a wonderful tweet yesterday that he titled um, The Casino on Mars, where he said that today's casino-like speculation is part of the bootstrapping process, referring to crypto, much like the gold rush of 1849 transformed Fran San Francisco from a quaint village into a major port and ultimately the heart of innovation. Today's speculative frenzy in crypto is attracting settlers and catalyzing the infrastructure necessary to turn a barren planet like Mars into a thriving crypto civilization. I, I think the, the idea of building a new world seems to be driving many of the products that are being built here. It's been a, a core feature of many of your answers up here as well. And I think it's a really interesting framing to both take into effect the maybe the more negative side effects of, of these new spaces full of speculation, but I think more so looking through this as a big open sandbox to go play and build the future in. So Vijay, I know that you and your team have been building you know, payment rails infrastructure, but with a very different starting point. And, and I wonder if you can maybe uh, share your vision or maybe talk a little bit about the, the different ways that streaming of payments might have an impact on the way that we create value or interact in, in the economy. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you think about payments in crypto today, you probably think about, you know, sending someone like, you know, a specific type of one-off payment. Maybe it has some conditions to it. Um, but really, when you look at the way that people interact, you know, in the real world, like the kinds of relationships they have with, with products, with services, um, uh, with each other, like you have these kind of patterns of recurring payments, basically, you know, subscriptions, like, you know, any kind of service, I guess you, you pay for, but also employment and stuff like that, um, where um, modeling it in crypto today is actually incredibly challenging. You you basically set yourself up with this, this terrible kind of relationship um, uh, where you sort of, you know, leave some sort of hanging approval, uh, you know, from your wallet to an, a service provider who you really just have to hope has your best interest at heart. It's not like a, a native push payment, which I think is like one of the, the sort of features of crypto payments that um, uh, we've all kind of like um, experienced firsthand and felt empowered by. Like you actually direct, you know, your finances. It's self-sovereign, you, you own it. Um, and I think that sense of, of ownership of your payments is something that um, we're able to replicate with Superfluid Streams um, in a way that I think feels very empowering. Um, and I think that like one of my my sort of long-term visions, I think, for the space um, is that um, I think that um, in replicating and, and sort of surpassing some of these kind of patterns from from you know outside of crypto today, um, like we want to be able to enable this more kind of long-term, like autonomous payments um, in streams and recurring recurring payment streams. Um, which basically like allow people to to not spend every day sort of coming back to their wallet and checking on various sort of financial positions or, or trading or topping up, um, but really just can like leave things to, for example, um, you know, if you've got your your uh, uh, your salary coming in, you can kind of have it um, uh, automatically kind of routing to various different types of investments they want to make or to your services, and you can actually just leave that running. And I think that's the, the vision I have is where. But people don't need to come and interface with their wallet every day to, to get crypto working for them. Uh, it's kind of a, a seamless, autonomous payment rail. I love seeing the number ticking up every second. It feels better somehow. <laughs> so I think a lot of the discourse around consumer crypto today is almost like um, counterbalanced or set in, uh, as opposed to the, the investment and effort putting towards infrastructure. That always seems to be such a ridiculous friction there for some reason. I think even in all your answers, mo most of us here are building tools, building infrastructure, using new infrastructure to de develop these type of applications that, that hopefully millions of people will use. Um, so, and I think we're also at this moment in time where there are a lot of new tools that are emerging. These infrastructure primitives that have been built on for the last two or three years are really coming into mainstream. They're being integrated. There's new form factors. I mean, I think I just am contractually obligated to say friend tech at least once up here on stage uh, to do it. But I, I would love maybe to, to, to talk about some of those 
infrastructure pieces that are going to enable the next type of consumer interactions or applications? An open question for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're 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 pretty like you know, you guys are a lot more later stage than us. Um, we've been building for the past year, and like um, once we realized that it was, we had to create something that was a direct to consumer product because naturally of the products that we were selling. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that oh. One of the things that um, was always was obviously going to be a pain point was like, how do we make sure we mimic a very seamless checkout flow so that it doesn't feel like restrictive? Because like the one thing that bad design or bad infrastructure does is that it reduces trust in the buyer, right? Like, I don't want to put my money into this thing, and I think that's where the that's where the mass adoption kind of lags a little bit right now because there isn't much of that trust and that's fair enough because you know you, you want to make sure where your money goes is trusted in a sense and so we've spent quite a long time trying to ensure that I mean putting in additional features that like make it much more accessible for people so more recently uh, in our kind of like collect and checkout flow um, adding in things like wallet abstraction features but not to mitigate the crypto buyers so having integrations that enable if you have a wallet come in and utilize that utilize usdc if you wish uh, or also you know serve the more kind of non-crypto native audience uh, and that was an obvious kind of one to consider because we went into market like super crypto native thinking yeah this is it like people want to buy on chain this way but um clearly uh, a way to do that is that so i think um to wrap it up, I think it's uh, payments has just been a pain point. Um, but I think longer term, once there is a lot more rate of activity in users and different types of business models that we can um, utilize, subscription is an obvious one and super fluid and, and, and the likes just make sense to just, you know, make that, uh, develop that product even further with those types of tools. I would, I would add actually that, um, you know, something that I, um, you can actually see in Frentech <laughs> as an example. Um, that I think is a really powerful um, kind of tipping point is that uh, like for a long while crypto has been quite restricted by basically the kind of platform policies of, of the kind of app marketplaces and, and sort of like moving to things like progressive web apps that can, people can basically install and get that app like experience on their homepage without having to kind of abide by all of these kind of you know payment rail policies and and the kind of like not be able to iterate basically in the way that we would like to um, to kind of you know understand consumers better um, to be more uh, visible and be in front of people. I think you know move, moving to that model and now kind of tapping into that um, you know the home screen position for apps. I think is like going to be a really big trend in unlocking um, a whole bunch of new types of users. Yeah. As well. And so if I can just jump in there before the time stops because like I think other examples outside of Frentech is Sofamon with the new like social, I don't know if, yeah, I think you've come across those, um, just like kind of like same same method of like messaging or like even push notification of like what activity is happening within your wallet is like a really fun interactive way that they're doing it from a social layer. Um, obviously Future Primitive with like the 6551 standard that they're pushing out. Um, and I'm just gonna show other friends as well because I think it's important. Shall I? No. Yeah, I mean, you know all of them. <laughs> get on Twitter, get on your Twitter soapbox, you can, you can do it. I want to get to our last question. So I, I think, you know, through a through line through this conversation is, and, and even in the title, is this idea of, of reaching millions of users. That, that, you know, the number of decks I've seen with people saying we're going to onboard the next billion users into crypto. Uh, and I think uh, Wilson Cusack, who's a big open source and I think contributor to the OP stack right now, tweeted something that I thought was just really interesting. He said, crypto people need to stop hand-wringing and seeing crypto as some niche thing that needs to go mainstream and realize that crypto already has a large and growing consumer base and represents one of the most desirable demographics to market to, has money and extremely online. I'm curious your reaction to the idea that we need to scale to tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of users, uh, or maybe the pathway to doing that is, is that through abstracting away the complexity or is it actually through serving that core user group even more? I think that attitude is why there's 4 million monthly active people on Ethereum. Like that's the philosophical attitude that I think isn't going to build what we need. And this idea of speculation to me is actually one I just fundamentally disagree with. I think it also leads to if 15 years later, we only have 4 million people on Ethereum. What are we doing here? Um, since you know the Bitcoin started and to me I think it plays out that building real value and building real networks doesn't happen from giving everyone Scrooge McDuck tokens 
I mean, um, maybe said it a different way, but same, you know, You're consistent, Google. consistent, uh, <laughs> consistent thought here is, you know, it's about solving those problems, right? So when you think about, I, no, no one really like, even really thinks about the protocol layer that supports sort of the World Wide Web today. There was a time when people had to think about it. No longer is that necessary, and it's the same with email, right? Um, SMTP, which is sort of the precursor to what you guys are trying to build, right? No one thinks about SMTP, nor needs to understand it in order to access email. And I think once we, but we have to be honest with ourselves about getting to that point, about understanding that abstracting this thing is, is probably the best path forward, and it's how you get more people on the train as opposed to creating barriers to entry of understanding for them to, to board. And my dream is no one knows about XMTP. Because right. if no one knows about us, no one knows about chains, no one cares about wallets, they care about identities being able to transfer, interact, and have digital interactions that do all the things we're doing, no one gives a shit about all of this terminology. Exactly. Really wish we had more time to get into that with you because I would like to go on record as a huge fan of Scrooge McDuck tokens and serving that core crypto demographic as a pathway forward so we can take that offline. I love it. You uh, should be. Yeah. But it's not how we get to billions of people. I'm, I'm seeing the red flashing light here, so come on. We can't do this anymore. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us here today and, thank you. and allowing us into your ears with those wonderful headphones. Thanks to our panelists here. And uh, Point Fund's next. He'll know. He'll know. He'll definitely know. All right. Thanks, folks. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, dude.